Can we imagine the clouds being rolled back and a, and a sonic boom of light so bright that we couldn't possibly even look into it? Oh, what we seek for you to come home today, God, please. How oh, awesome would it be to be able to go to where we're supposed to be, God, and no longer be trapped in a world that we're pilgrims, that we're just roaming, God, trying to make evidence of what this means, trying to make fact of what this means, God, when we know this is chaos. Because the ruler of this world cannot be anything but chaos. Oh, God, how we pray for peace. Peace in our lives, God, if only we could imagine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't that be something on one morning, one day, one afternoon? I don't think I can totally imagine that. Can you imagine the blast that it would be when he comes home? The power? You know, I was talking to Barb last night as we were driving home, thinking about, do you know that everything that we do on this earth, everything we do all comes down to that one final breath? Really, seriously, honestly, we've talked about this before. It's not part of the sermon this morning, but I can't get it off my mind because one breath and we decide, not decide, but we go to our final eternity. The choice is made now. And the things we do here do matter. The things we do for Him. Because someday, someday, in that breath, that change of life, that, 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 that metamorphosis, when, when we do go home, Everything, what we thought was so important, only matters to what it was for God. Can you only imagine? We have to write this down, Butch, and start another sermon. This morning I want to take some things away from you. I talked to a lot of people during the week, sometimes more than others, but I want to take some more away from you this morning. I want you to think. I want you to question. I want you to look at your Bibles. If you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. There's a wonderful passage of Scripture here that I have spent many hours in. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. I've spent many hours in this passage of Scripture because I'm human. I get wore down, beat up, tired, afraid. I think they call that scared in East Texas. And there's a passage here that Jesus Christ talks to us and He says, right here it says, Therefore I tell you, your Bible may say, say but I love the word tell because tell is a word that says insecure. In fact, hmm? how many times you heard the words, you've been told to go clean up your room. You've been told to do something. You say, would you please go clean up your room? Would you please do this? Would you please do that? But when somebody finally has enough and they do what, what do they say? I told you. I'm telling you. See, Jesus Christ was speaking to us from authority because he is authority of life. He's authority of life, and he says, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Sometimes we read too far, don't we? What you'll eat, what you'll drink, what your body is, what you wear, it's not more than food, and your body more than clothes. In today's social, uh, social economy, capitalist economy, we would believe our appearance is everything. That's what we teach everybody, don't we? The way I dress, the way I comb my hair, the way I look, who's cool, who's not cool. Who's up to date? Who's not up to date? It's all about an image, isn't it? It's all about a self-image. It's all about the exterior side. But that is the world who rules through Satan. Amen. The God that we have says what you have in your heart is the most valuable part. Amen. But as Christians, you have to accept yourself because the last two weeks we keep talking about trust. We talk about belief. We talk about faith. Then Jesus looks at us and says, I ask you, I tell you, why do you worry? It is an act of atheism. It says that I don't believe in my God. Oh, I'm so worried, Brother Tim. I'm worried. I'm just worried. I'm worried about COVID. I'm worried about the world coming to an end. I'm worried about everything. Really? How can you be worried and say that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, your, your Lord and Savior? Because this is what he said. He said, I mean, when you read this, do not worry about your life. Does it say not be concerned? If you don't know the difference, look them up. There's a concern and there's a worry. A worry is walking up to a swimming pool, looking at it and wondering how deep it is, what it feels like, what's going on inside of it, and concern is taking steps into it to figure out what it is. Difference doesn't mean just float around on a cloud and wait for something to happen. No. It means do not worry because if you put your faith, what did he say right here? If you put your faith, he said, look at the birds. They don't sow. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any birds rustling off to a job. Have you? Hmm? 
They don't have any barns. I've checked that out. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? Are you? Then why, as you shake your head to me, why do you worry? Huh? Our Father, give us the words, please. Give us the words. Let us enjoy this time together to explore your word, God, and to, to explode myths, God, and to put Satan in his place, to tell him to shut up, that we've listened to him all we want to listen. We've heard all the doubt from our government, all the fear from the world. We've heard it over and over again, all the insurance that we need, God, when all we need is faith in you. If we could only imagine how wonderful that is to put our total faith in you this morning. God, bless us with your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated i got to watch where I'm walking and praying. I'll fall off the stage. <laughs> that would be a new one. Huh? Pastor fell off the stage. Jesus has challenged us to think about these words this morning in this passage of Scripture because our salvation, belief, and trust in Him far outweighs anything that we could possibly possess in this world. Period. End of conversation. But it yet is one that therefore when He says this, He tells us this, Why do you worry? He already knows what you need. Look, look, if you're looking at 25, you can stay in 25 through 34. 25 through 34 in Matthew 6 there. If you've never experienced this passage of Scripture, you should highlight this passage of Scripture. And if you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning worrying, hmm, worrying about something, having anxiety about something, stressing about something, read this passage of Scripture and then find out and ask yourself the very question that he was asking this morning. He's asking us again, why do you worry? You said you believe in me, God of gods, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. You say this is my future, my eternity, my retirement, my life. Then why? Why do we worry? Why do we worry? Our words at that point are just wasted breath. They really are. When we stand up and say, I'm a Christian, and then the following words come out of our mouth, I'm just worried about our country. Be concerned about our country. We should be. Why? Because we should be the light, the testimony. We should be the one standing up going, there is a problem in America today. As someone prayed earlier, there is a level of immorality that has been placed upon us that the, the, the truth is the lines have been molded have been melted together there is no more standards it's all just whatever you feel like doing whatever's good that's why when I was thinking about Christ coming home someday when he comes home it said that every knee shall bow I think every knee shall bow why because the purity will be reinstated into this world of what it was supposed to be and in our shame we're going to fall to our knees and beg mercy of God himself We've allowed the lines to be blended. I mean, this battle in Texas right now over abortion. Our country is battling to support abortion. It's not a battle of not. It's a battle to. Our government right now says we're going to fight this law because it could eradicate that statute in America, period. How tragic would that be? And that's just one example where our government and our leaders are saying that we should go further into a level of immorality. Do not tell me that you can't witness right now that greed is beyond control. They have a modern term for it. You know what that is? Inflation. It's a very technical word, right? It's called greed. It's called when I can get enough of everything, what would I possibly do with it? I mean, we have people that could buy the world over and over and over again. What possible is there except for control? I want to be in control. And this morning, that's kind of the question when we look at these passages of Scripture, when we look at this, and he says this, not to worry. Sometimes we need to realize that we need to let it go because we're trying to be in what? I want to be in control of my life. Amen? I want to drive this bus. I want to do that. I want to. You see, it becomes a question of, does God accept us? Or do we accept God? I have many passages of Scripture this morning that we could turn to where I'm pretty sure that God has already proven what He will do for us. God has already accepted every one of you. God has already went to the cross, provided love, 
eternal life for us. He has acceptance. The acceptance issue of God this morning is not God to us. We need to wake up and <coughs> remember who is resisting whom. Amen? Amen? We are in resistance. We resist God. God said, here's a plan. I got a plan for you. He said that he told me this a long time ago. He said, Tim, here's a plan for you. Your parents gave it to you. They led you to it. They gave it to you. They showed you how it worked. And what did he do? I'm going to go do it my way. How's that working out? How's that working out this morning? I want you to think about it. Why do we worry? Mother Teresa once said, if we have no peace, it's because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. I would slightly change that a bit to say that we have no peace because we've forgotten who we belong to. Amen. We belong to God. Amen. When you accepted Christ, you became an inheritance, a child of God. We go through this over and over again in remembrance. We are children of God. The question comes, then why do we show a lack of faith and belief that we worry about our lives? Again, don't get confused. Concern Worry, two different things. But why do we show worry? Honestly, to some degree, why are we concerned? What I have here is just something I need to get to point A to point B. It's like a bus ticket. I picked it up here, and I'm going here. I just need a snack and a beverage along the way, right? Southwest Airlines, they still do that? I don't guess you can get a meal on a plane anymore, can you? It's probably something to do with COVID. <coughs> I know you can't get pepper at the Olive Garden anymore. We found that out last night. <coughs> what? Oh, yeah. No more fresh ground pepper. Don't get me off on that. No, really? Joe's going, I'm going over there right now. I've got to go. I'm sorry. 11 30. I've got to go fill out a card. Be that, and that's good. But be that passionate about your God, right? Amen. 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 Be that. See, we cannot accept the gift of God until we come to reality of who we are. And sometimes, even in salvation, we say, God, I accept you. But we don't really ever totally accept Him his ways into our life we wonder why do i still struggle god why am i still having issues why is there still a problem why is there still conflict it's because we say the words we do place them in our heart but we don't really we kind of keep it sheltered don't we keep a little roof on it mm, little anti-jesus penetration roof right god i'm coming he's like hello hello i know i know god i'm working on some stuff when i <laughs> when I, Tim, get this worked out, God, I'm going to give you a call. We're going to get together, right? We're going to get our God on then, right? No, the whole purpose was he said, I, I'll work that out for you if you'll let me in there. Amen. But you won't let me in. It's not a question of who is accepting who. It's a question of our denial back to him, our rejection back to him. I want you to think about that this morning. When he calls on you, he says, I have something for you. How can you be blessed when you're like, I'm going to do this my way. I'm going to worship my way. I'm going to pray when I want to. I'm going to do what I want to. I'm going to do. How can you be in that world of denial when you don't allow God to work in your life? We know the scriptures over and over again. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, he said that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Well, I have no peace in my life. I just, it's so chaotic. It's so crazy. And the world, I, turn, I go home, I turn that thing on, and blah, 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 blah. Well, they have to go There's nobody around them, but they're through the mask, through the mask, they preach chaos. Huh? Through the mask, they preach fear to us this morning. Huh? Oh, guess what? There's another, what is it? A deviant? Is that what they're calling it? Variant. A deviant? There's another deviant level coming. And oh, by the way, they discovered another one in South America this week. So if you're worried this morning, folks, you got plenty to worry about. If you're going to keep listening to Satan, if you're going to keep listening to the chaos of this world, you have plenty to worry about this morning. I'm telling you, I'm tired of it. Get over it. Get in your God bucket and put your God on and get over this stuff. Amen. My goodness. We've been beat up, beat down, drugged behind. They're going to keep preaching it because they won't control the problem is they can't have control because my God's already got it. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Mm. Amen. 
Look at verse 27 in Matthew 6. Look at 27. Can any of you buy can any of you by worrying? It may say add a single hour to your life. It may talk about growing an inch taller. But what I want you to do this morning is just stop right there at worry. Can any one of you by worrying do what? Change anything. Change anything. Oh my goodness, we're going to worry about it. Oh, let's, let's call a committee meeting. I'm not talking about our church. I'm talking about the world in general. Everybody is in. A, if you're working for anybody, you're having a meeting. Yeah. Got to have a meeting. Got, I feel, got to, got to, got to have a meeting. Mm. Got to discuss it. Let's discuss it, write it down, and then go to another meeting. And then let's go to another meeting. Can you imagine all the subcommittees and meetings that are going on in Washington right now? And if that have occurred in the last hundred years, and what's it got us? More chaos. More chaos. More fear. More worry. Oh, we don't know. Social Security might run out. We'll just print some more money. Dollar may fall. Chaos, COVID, deviants, variants, whatever you want to call it. More levels, more levels, more levels. We might have to do this. We might have to do that. We don't know what we're doing because they don't have control. Barb and I went and looked at a horse a few months ago. I said, let me try riding that horse. I hopped up on the horse. Horse took off. Faster it went, the harder I squeezed my legs together. Everybody's going, don't squeeze the horse. Anytime something's trying to run out between me, I want to squeeze it. The problem was, I wasn't in control. About the fourth lap around the arena, the guy said, you want to ride some more? I said, no, I won't off of this thing. If there wouldn't have been a pin, I would have been in Waco. That's the way our world is right now. It is absolutely out of control. Quit acting like it's not. Amen. Man, we tiptoe around this thing like, oh, well, we've got to be politically correct. No, we're totally out of control. When you can't even tell a joke anymore, when you can't breathe, when you can't walk down the street and feel comfortable in your own country, the country that your parents and grandparents died for to fight, when we're taking down statues, because oh <laughs> we're going to offend somebody, this is the history of this country. Yes. We're taking it down because we need to tell the new kids, hey, there is no history. With no basis, no foundation, we can tell them what we want to. Let's just be honest. That's what's going on. We're going to tell them what we want them to know. And if no parents stand up and no church stands up and no one stands up, we will brainwash them into believing what we want them to believe. Amen. This is the country that we're living in today. Can any one of you, by worrying, no, not a soul, then I have to ask you again, why do we worry? Look at the end of that little statement right there in 27. Oh, ye of little faith. You can say you. That's modern day English, but I kind of like that ye right there. Oh, ye of little faith. Jesus was talking. He said, I tell you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, I'm God. Do not worry about your life. Put your faith. You say you have faith. You say you trust. You say you believe. Then believe in me. And when you step in the morning, know that you step with Jesus Christ. Amen. Because when it's all said and done, that breath, that moment, that's all there will be. Amen. That second, I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home, Danny. I'm going home. I'm going home to Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, that excites me this morning. That makes me happy this morning to know that I'm going home to Jesus Christ. I am not of this mess. I'm ready to leave this here. Is mess an okay word in the pulpit? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I'll probably get a letter from somebody. It's okay. Don't worry. It's all right. I'm not worried about it. In 1 Corinthians, like I said, he said, the God is not the author of confusion. In 2 Timothy 1.7, he says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. If, if, if you read that, listen to this. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7. What is he saying? God has given us a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Read it. Don't just look at the headlines. I know Noah and the ark. I know Adam and Eve. Read it. He's talking to you. Therefore, I tell you, Joe. I tell you, Tim. I tell you, Paula. I tell you, uh, uh, Lynn. I tell you, Betty. Yes. 
Your knee surgery is coming up. Do not worry about it. Should you be concerned? Yes. But should you fall apart? No. Why? Because we get down. We get down. Right? Huh? You been here? Hmm? God, I put my trust and my life in you. Amen. You see, God, I don't have the answers to whether I'm going to raise perfect children. I don't have an answer on whether I'm going to keep my job. I don't have an answer, God, on where my next check's coming from. I don't have an answer for many, many, many things, God, but I know in you, you are going to work this out somehow, some way for me. Amen. Hmm? Yes. Have you read this part of the book? Go on and look at it. Look at it. Why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, they're not, they're more, excuse me, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor dressed as they do. If this, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? I tell you, do not worry about your life. Because you got all the answers? No. Because you don't have all the answers. Amen? Amen. I don't have all the answers. What, what, is that not relieving? Man, I'm doing everything I know how to. I've read all the books. Man, all the how-to, DIY, improve myself books. I've talked to all the doctors. Man, I'm doing everything the world's telling me how to do. But one thing I need to do, God, is put myself in you. Why? Because I'm a total misfit. You know what I'm saying? I don't have an answer, God, but I got a relief. I got a relief. I might have messed it up to here, and I'm probably going to mess it up some more. There's that mess it up word again. But in you, God, in you, God, you give me grace and forgiveness. You give me peace if I will accept it. But many times, like I said, we want the peace of God, but we want to keep one arm up here, God. It's like, you know what I mean? Hmm? It's like your wife trying to get too close to you. I love you too, honey, but no kisses in the morning. Right? Hmm? It's okay. Relax. Relax. As far as I know, we're going to spend like 10,000 years together. And guess what? He's going to really turn me loose up there. I'm still holding back. Celebrate who you are. Isn't that what the world tells us? Who are you? If that's who you are, let it out. Let your God shine through. That's what we sang this morning. It's not just a children's song. Hmm? Let me share a passage of Scripture with you. Because this is really awesome if I can find it. I know it's in my notes. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Listen to this. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. Huh? Me and a friend of mine went crappie fishing years ago. We walked up a creek in the middle of December. It was cold. We caught two little, two little legal crappie. Two little, we skinned them out. We built this little fire and we put a stick on them and we cooked them right there. Have you ever eaten, eaten anything without salt and pepper? Yep. <laughs> no. No. Right quick, we found out salt and pepper is very, very important. Salt especially. And what does it say right here? You, look, side, look at each other, look at each other. You are the salt. You're the flavor of this world, the excitement of this world. Why? Because this world doesn't realize it's dead. Hmm? Well, we see the lights. I think of Vegas sometimes when I read that passage of Scripture. We see the lights of Vegas, the, the, all the things going on 24 hours a day, gambling. Anything you want, anything goes. And they think they're so alive. But they're dead. Until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and make Him your King in your life, you are dead. I don't care how much is going on. But once you get Him, don't sit down. Pick up your salt shaker and get a salt shaker, salt shaker, and shake it. You are the salt of the Lord. What's wrong with him? He's goofy as a bed bug. Yep, I'm saved. Why? Because this stuff is impenetrable to me. Why? I'm covered in God. I put my helmet on in the morning. I put my shield on, my, my, my pants, my, my sandals. I don't get it all right, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I put myself, I armor myself with God so I can go out in the world and deal with this mess. There's that word again. 
Why? Because I'm the salt. Matthew 7. You're the salt. You're the salt. Look at uh, uh, Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. The salt and the light. Your double D's ought to be shining. Maybe you got one of those flashlights that takes like 22 of them like the police have, right? Not only does it shine, but you can hit people on the head with it at the same time. Hey, pay attention. Listen to me. God is coming back. Can you imagine? Jesus Christ is coming back. How humbling. I was talking to Barb again this week. We talked twice this week. Two times. We had two conversations this week. Besides, bring me a glass of tea. That gets you in trouble, won't it? But no, we were talking about, do you realize, in the humility, in the humbleness of it all, when you look at somebody, regardless of whether, I don't know if I really like them or not, I don't know if I really know them or not, do you realize the whole point of the issue is whether you like me, William, or not, whether you like me, Paula, or not, whether you like me, Miss June, or not, whether you accept me or not, Brother Jim, whether you know, I need you to know that Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. I need you to know this. Hey, see, that's where Jesus was. He was like, you can beat me. You can pull, you can, you can curse me, you can crucify me, but you need to understand one thing. What did he say on the cross? Forgive them for they know not what they do. What was he talking about? They don't understand. I'm coming back to take control of this world someday. Amen. I am Jesus. I am the life. I am the salt. I am the light of this world. Will you come go with me? That's the whole point. No longer looking at each other like there's something different. You're different. You know what? You're absolutely different. We're all unique in our own ways. But the burden that lays on our heart as Christians is, can I please tell you that Jesus Christ is coming back and no matter what we do, no matter how rich we end up or how poor, we're going home. We've got to make a decision, folks. Jesus is coming back. I need you to know that because I absolutely love you in Christ. I need you to know. I tell you, do not worry about your life. Amen? Amen. 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 He says you're the salt of it all. You're the light of it all. I wonder this morning if I ask you, when did, when did Adam and Eve have concern about their relationship with Christ? Then he came back and to get to Genesis. Hadn't been to Genesis. Thank you. It's part of my contract. As soon as they picked that apple. Soon as they picked that apple. But why did they now have concern? Hmm? Because they sinned. They sinned. Because they did, they sinned. But is it the sin so much? Or was it that they decided to take their own road? Amen? You see, our relationship with God is good, right? When we accept Him, right up to the point until we do what? Same thing Adam and Eve did. Huh? See if I can find that right quick. I'd love to read this passage to you. Right up to the point that Eve took of the fruit. True? I'm going to find it. I know I've got it in my notes here. It's in Genesis. It's in the beginning. You see, in Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to go back a little bit further. Genesis chapter 1, it said that God created man in his own image and blessed the male and the female, stating, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, the great paradise, subdue it, have control over it, have control over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and everything that moves on earth. God said, I give you this, I grant you this. Every grass and herb to every beast of the air, and even all creepy things. I grant you, I give you, I want you to have all these blessings. But sometimes, see, I think we live our lives in the fear when we're in fear and anxiety that we believe otherwise of God, don't we? Do we believe that God said, I'm going to give you these because I hate you? Did He grant life to us? Did He grant these things to us because He wanted us to live in fear or anxiety? Many of us read chapter 2 like this, and then God waited until Adam and Eve went to sleep, and then He then like the Grinch who stole Christmas. He snuck into the Garden of Eden and he snatched away all the berry bushes and the peaches and the plum trees and he scarfed up all the pays, pecans, and pears. He said, no, this is all mine. He stampeded all the cows. And, hmm? Is that how it reads? He fried all the chickens. That was a good thing for pastors. Hmm? Y'all with me? He even snagged up all the little bunny rabbits. 
Is that the way we read Genesis 2? No. He took away the sun, the moon, the stars, and the fact that according to the Democrat Party, he even started global warming. <laughs> Do we live our lives, though, if that's how we read what he gave us? Because when we live in fear and anxiety and worry, that's what we're telling him because he gets a little confused because he said, I granted you all these things. Do you understand? Read again. Read past the story. In Genesis, he was talking to Adam and Eve. He said, I give you these things. I give you life. I created you. The most awesome part of it, do you realize that the breath that is going in and out of your body right now is the breath of God himself? Amen. Read chapter 3. I breathe life into them. This is not just some oxygen. Hmm? This is not just some air. You were granted the breath of Christ Himself. The, the breath of God. The power that we have. And Adam and Eve was really good with everything right up to when? Hmm. I think it's in Genesis 3.6. Would you turn there for me right quick? Genesis 3.6. Genesis 3, 6, I believe, is where we find a very interesting change of life. <coughs> Listen to me now. I want you to think about your life right now. Think about what your focus is right now as I read this. Listen, listen. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Don't get hung up on woman. I'm not. Don't get hung up on woman this morning. I'm, okay, guys, because you're like, as soon as we read that, all the men go, not my fault, not me. Man, I'm, I'm perfect in God. Let's just, let's just, how about if we say it like this? So when the person, hmm, when the person saw that the tree was good for food, when I decided, listening, when I decided, now here's what God said, but when I decided, let's go on, this is fun, that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to my eyes. Mm, mm, mm. How much trouble has that called us, guys? <laughs> let's bring you back into the story now, huh? How many times have you said that? Boy, that I am pleasant with that. Mm, I, mm, I like what I'm seeing. Oh, my. Hmm? God told us over here, this is all yours. Every bit of this paradise is yours. Every bit of what you were given, everything that you can see, every bird, every animal, every flower, every fruit, everything is yours. And I even give you my breath of life. That it was pleasant to my eyes and the tree was desirable to make one wise. Read past the story, folks. Hmm? You ever been here? Come on now. You ever said this? Oh, I like that. I desire that. She took of the fruit and she ate it and she also gave some to her husband and he ate it. So guys, I hate to say it, it wasn't like you went, we went, no, 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 I'm not going to eat that. We went right along with it, didn't we? Because we wanted to, right? Probably so, Butch. That, that's Butch's story. He was cowering in fear. Adam was over there. He was, don't hit me, Eve. I'll eat it, please. <laughs> She came over there with a frying pan and said, eat this. Mm. No, she said, here, eat this. Why? Because he thought the same thing. You see, everything's good in our lives until we start making the decision. Huh? We're good. God has a plan for us. He wants the, the, the same situation in the story of Adam and Eve is the same world we're living in today. It was the same thing when he met you wherever he met you and he said, I accept him. He said, Tony, here, here, I'm going to give you the same freedom. Because how do I know that? He gave you choice over your life, didn't he? Hmm? He gives us choice every day. How do you want to spend your day? We can argue it all day long. We can say, God is, God is just horrible. He's just so mean. He's all, he's all about no, 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 no. no. That's what I hear from people. Oh, I don't want to become a Christian because God's all about no. Can't do anything fun with God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But the fact is, God is the one that said, here, you can have my life, my breath, and you can have everything that you want. I don't know that. He said that. He said, because you're more valuable than anything else on this earth. Hmm? You're more valuable. You're more valuable. 
I'm going to give you life, and I'm going to give you choice. Oh, and I can't help but say those words. How is that working out for you? You see, we struggle because we will not give acceptance to Him. Hmm? We talk about it. Oh, we, we're good about talking. Let's have a meeting. Let's talk about it. Hmm, let's, let's write down the pros and cons. I'm a good Christian. Hmm, I'm a good Christian. I went to church. Hmm. I said, Jesus. I prayed Wednesday. It's not about the act anyway. You see, that's the whole deal. It's not about the act of Christianity. No. It's about believing. And if you say that you believe and that you trust and that you have faith, then it means that you should not be worried about what's going on. Concerned? Oh, yeah, we should be standing up because we're the salt and the light of this world. We should be standing up going, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Stop doing stupid stuff. That's where we come in. And when they say, well, I guess you got all the answers. No, we don't have all the answers, but we know one thing. We've got a God that does. Amen. And He said, when you put your lives back into spectrum with what I wrote in this book, the world will get better again. Thou shalt not kill. What are we doing? Slaughtering each other by the thousands. Hmm? In our own streets... Have you read the statistics in Chicago alone? It's, 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 it's hundreds of people a year shooting and killing each other. And we see what I mean? We just look at it like, well, there's more people got murdered up in Chicago. Let them least in East Texas. You see, when I say when God comes back someday and that sonic boom separates the clouds and Jesus Christ comes back and it is so bright that we fall to our knees because the standard of life will be reset again to what it was supposed to be by His Word. We'll have no choice but to fall in shame when he asks us, what are we doing? How are we committed? Hmm? It's a reset button, folks. All this year we've talked about 2021 being a choice. It's a choice of how you live your lives. He gave us that choice. He gave us that choice. That's the God. That's how much he loves us. In his acceptance for us, he said, I know you're going to break it, but I'm still going to let you play with it. And we've tore the wheels off of it. The engine's laying in the ground. I don't know why I pictured a big Tonka dump, dump truck. I don't know why. Because they're supposed to be, you all remember those? Yep. Those great big ones made out of steel. Tonka said they're indestructible, Dan. What's the first thing every kid did? Trying to tear them apart. It's in our nature. It's in our DNA. It's in our DNA. i got to hurry. We're running out of time. I ask you this morning, why do we worry? Why do we worry? When you look at Genesis 3, 6, the same issue, the issue there with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had a problem. Is when they started making their own decision is when their life turned wrong. Amen? Amen. I ask you this morning, I ask you please to question yourself. Who is making decisions in your life? Are you putting it in front of God? Remembering? God, I don't have the answer. How about a relief? Man? Is, that, is that not a relief? I get to take this, I don't have an answer for I need to get to put it at the altar and say, God, I don't have an answer for this, but I need you to help me with it. Putting my faith in the fact that if I keep putting myself in God every day, every day I'm going to read your word, God. Every day I'm going to pray. Every day, God, I'm going to be a witness for you. Every day, God, then I know in the end it's going to work out. Because I can't see it now. I can't see my baby that's two. I can't see him when he's going to be 30. Huh? But I know if I put my faith and trust in you, that it's going to work out. Somehow, some way. I know there's testimonies in the morning this morning of mothers who have raised children that drove them absolutely crazy. And yet they stand in pulpits this morning. And I'm not just talking about me. I, I be one. Huh? I know there are many, 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 many examples of what we didn't see, what we, what we thought would never happen that's happened. You know why? Because when God comes into a life and you allow that life to accept God and listen to Him, that life changes. It's all in the change. In closing this morning, let me share you a story. It says, if you are a believer in miracles, this would be the one. The doctor was talking about a man named Al Marino. By the laws of physics and medicine, he should be dead today. Marino was a window washer in Manhattan. He rode platforms with his brother, Edgar, high into the skies. 
On December the 7th of 2007, a great catastrophe happened when both of the brothers fell from their platform 47 floors to the ground. If you are a believer in miracles, this would be the one. There was no parachutes, no catching their shirts on a flagpole, or no bouncing off an awning. No, both brothers were hurled some 470 feet to the concrete below. For two weeks, Al hung on to life, but Edgar had passed away. Then on Christmas Day, he spoke. And a month later, the doctors began to talk about him walking again. If you are a believer in miracles, this would be the one. You see, in the beginning of the human race, Adam also fell from a great height. That's what we were talking about this morning. Adam began to make decisions. Adam chose his life. From a sinless glory of an image of God, Adam and Eve fell. They fell, why? Because God was angry? Because God is mean? Because God made the rules too hard? No, they fell because they chose not to accept God's plan for their life. It's that simple this morning. In that terrible fall, he brought with us all of us. Yay, Adam. Great decision. <coughs> However, in the good news, in John 3, 16, it said, For God so loved the world. Amen. Hmm? Come on. He gave his only son that whomever would accept in him would not die but have the gift of eternal life. And that gift brings with it peace. I cannot have peace in my life if I do not accept His plan for my life. You can keep struggling with it. I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm talking about having peace in your life. You can keep struggling with it, but as long as you're doing this, white knuckling it, right? Hmm? You don't have control over it, folks. And what he doesn't understand, where he gets confused sometimes, is why... Don't you give it to him. We struggle so hard. We struggle so hard. We're, we're, we go against the current. We struggle so hard when he said, give it to me. Quit, quit fighting. Give me your life. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you so much. He lived a sinless life and then willingly accepted going to the cross to die for each one of us. On the third day, Christ Jesus rose from, rose from the grave and in His resurrection, He made it possible for all of us to accept Him. Who's rejecting who this morning? Because for the second time in man's creation, He, was given, he gave us the opportunity to breathe the breath of life. I have to tell you this morning, I have to, I, I implore you, I beg you to listen this morning that if you do not know who Jesus Christ is this morning, you are not alive. If you want to stop struggling in this world, put your acceptance in Christ, but also believe that it will work out. You want peace? Then please ask yourself this morning, why are you resisting? Why are you resisting? Matthew says, why do you worry? Why are you chasing the things? In Matthew 6.32 it says, why are you chasing the things of the pagan? Hmm? The physical things of this world, the focus, the, the blind things of this world. When your heavenly Father already knows what you need. Cindy and I, we've talked about this, right, Cindy? He already knows what you need. He's just saying, what? would you mind asking me for it? Huh? Would you be so kind? Because I'll take care of you. That's what he's trying to say right here. Do not worry. Why? So he's just saying, don't worry. Huh? Don't worry, Pam. No. You know why he says don't worry? Because he is God of all. He already knows. He already knows. It's us that don't know. It's us that can't see on the other side of the door. He said, it's like we come to him and we say, God, you don't understand. My life's just so complex. It's so complicated. I have so many issues in my life, God, that there's no way that you could possibly understand them. It's like we want to say, sorry, you wasted your time on me, dear God. I know you created me. Woo. I know you made me. I know you created the earth. I've read it in the book. 
But you just can't fix me, God. I'm unfixable. Huh? Really? That's what you want him to believe. Mm. That's what you want him to believe. But the good part was God said, really? Really? Because he said, my, my yoke is light and my burden is easy. He said, I'll forgive you of whatever you have, and I will give you life. In Matthew 6, it says, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and accept me in all these things. All these things that you're worrying about, I will give to you. Man, some, a lot of you, I'm telling you, a lot of you need to go home today and don't close this when you leave here. You need to go home, have lunch, sit down, get you a good chair, don't go to sleep, and reread Matthew 6, 25-34. And think about the fact that we separate, separate and segregate everything in this world and we look at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Paradise and we think that's one world and we think we're going to another one when you understand one thing. There is one paradise because there is one God. Amen. It didn't die when Adam and Eve left it. Do you find that in the Bible? And then God closed up the paradise and it was never anymore. No, it's the same one, folks. It's the same promise, it's the same God, it's the same paradise, and we have the same issues. We won't let go of control and accept Him to drive our lives. You want some peace in your life? Look at the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, see how that's working for you, and then try really, really, really placing your trust in God. Amen. By that very simple thing I showed you all ago, God, I don't have the answers. I don't know. I'm going to let this go, God. I'm going to let this go and put it in your hands. These are, this is my prayer request list, God. This is my list of prayer requests I have for you. I'm going to put my trust in you. Because in my last breath, that will be all that matters. Come, Miss Peggy, if you would, please. Adam and Eve had nothing to worry about until they started making their own decisions. We have nothing to worry about until we started making our own decisions. But once they started making their own decisions, what did they hear next? Where are you? See, God came in communion that afternoon. He came down to the garden. He was going to have his talk and walk with them because why? He loved them. He wanted to spend time with them. And he said, where are you? And in their shame, not God's, in their lack of acceptance, he said, where are you? This morning, he's calling the same thing to you. Where are you? You said you're one of mine. You said you accepted me. You said you believed in me. You said you're mine. He says, where are you this morning? Where have you gone to in your minds? Where are your hearts? Where is your focus right now? I wish he would hush so we could go home. <laughs> it's okay. I'm all right with that. But he's not. Because he's calling to you this morning. Where are you? You're the salt and the light of this world. I am not of fear. I am of peace. If you want fear, why do you keep going back to the other side? Why do you go home and for the next seven days you turn on the TV, you get on your phones and your laptops and you blah, 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 all the junk that the world wants to give you and then you wonder why you have chaos and peace, unrest in your lives. Go home and turn on some God. Come back tonight. Recharge your batteries again. Come back Wednesday. Listen some more. When you tell me that you love it, then where are you? That's from God, not from me. I tell you, why do you worry when I give you peace? Take off some control this morning. Put it at His feet. Amen? Amen. 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 Our Father, I come to you this morning. Thanking you for this time because you've stepped all over me this morning, God. Oh, I love it when you rip on me. Thank you for your words. They're so fluid. And if we could just put ourselves where this Bible is, God. God, call to us. Where are we? Where are we? Remind us of who we are. Remind us of the great peace that you give us, the choice, the blessings. Where are we, God? By the evidence of our country, God, we are lost. By the evidence of our world, God, we are not standing up, God. Where is the light? Where is the light? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you'll stand with me and turn to page 294, please.